In this video, let's talk for just a minute about how we graph polar equations. So these are equations that don't have x's and y's, instead they've got r's and thetas. Now what you'll find most of the time is that you'll have the r written as a function of theta. So in other words, the r, which is the, the radius or the reach that you're stretching out from the origin, will depend on your angle, will depend on your theta. So, so as theta varies, you'll get um, R values that are longer or shorter. And so, so it makes some very interesting graphs here. Here I've, I've just drawn a couple of, of different polar graphs. Um, you get these interesting spiral type curves when you graph polar functions. So let's talk about how we graph these. Like how, how would you get these if you wanted to graph them by hand? Well, m what most people do is they'll use a table of R theta values, in which case you'll, you'll choose some thetas and then you'll find the R's that go with them and then you'll kind of plot them on a point by point basis. Um, now the second uh, little tip I'll give here, we'll have to clarify this when we actually get into some examples, but you have to hit, make sure to hit the, the major angles because these polar functions will typically have sines and cosines in there and you want to hit the angles that make sine and cosine be their extreme values like one so you're stretching out as far as you can at certain angles All right so we don't don't actually just pick these angles at random but i'll clarify what that means in just a minute all right so let's look at an example here so this is a classic example you'll see many examples like this r equals 4 minus 4 sine theta. So as I said earlier, what I have here is I've got r expressed as a function of theta as most of these are. Okay, and so what we're going to do is we're going to make a chart where we're going to pick some thetas and we're going to find the r's that, that go with them. Now let's go back here for a minute. What did I mean by, by major angles or major values for theta? Well, in the unit circle, what I would consider your major angles would be like, you know, theta being uh, zero, right? Or pi over two, or pi, or three pi over two, or two pi. Like these are what I would consider your major angles. Now there is a clarification I'm going to have to make about these later in the video, but for now, just just think about those as as your major angles, and I'll. I'll make a, a, an extra comment about that coming up shortly. Okay, so for this guy, four minus four sine theta, I, I'm gonna let theta be uh, zero, pi over two, pi, three pi over two, and two pi. And for some reason, if I wasn't done yet, if I've, you know, if I've only sketched out, you know, half of a, a, a curve or something, you're welcome to do more. You don't have to stop, but usually you'll find yourself completing some revolution and then retracing a curve you've already traced if you go too far. All right, but in any case, let, let's use these theta values. So if theta was zero, then sine of zero is zero, and four minus zero is four. And let's go ahead and finish up the table and then we'll talk about how to graph it. If um, theta was pi over two, sine of pi over two is one, one times four is four, 4 minus 4 makes 0. If you plug in pi, I'll speed this along, r would be 4. If you plug in 3 pi over 2, sine of 3 pi over 2 is negative 1. And so negative 1 times 4 is negative 4. And 4 minus negative 4 is the same as 4 plus 4. You'd get 8 if you go through that algebra. And then if you plug in 2 pi, Sine of 2 pi is 0, 0 times 4 is 0, 4 minus 0 is 4, okay? So we get these theta r values, or r theta values. All right now, here, here's how I personally would recommend you thinking about how to graph these. Um, you know, th this is just the way I guess my brain works. Think about, you know, having like a little man sitting here at the origin, and he's got a gun, all right? And he's going to aim in the direction of theta, and then his gun is going to shoot as far as the R values say to go out. So in the first point, the theta is zero. So he's facing this direction. And we're going to go four units out in that direction. It doesn't matter about the X, Y axis and what's positive and what's negative. 
he is going a positive four units in the direction that he's facing. Okay, so we would go out a total of one, two, three, four units, and this would be the first point right here. Okay, in yellow, I'll do the second point. Next, we're gonna face our body towards pi over two. So pi over two is up here, and we're gonna go zero units out in that direction. In other words, we haven't gone anywhere. Okay, so somehow I have to get from here to here. Now I do not just draw a straight line. That's not what we do. Okay, you have to remember, this theta is ranging from zero to pi over two. So think of it as like, you know, if he's got his gun, he's swinging from zero out to pi over two. Okay, or maybe you can think of like a fishing pole or, a, you know, a fishing line in, in the water with a bobber. All right, as the fisherman turns, this R value is going to be reeled in from a distance of four back to zero, but as we turn. So hopefully this is clear, and you, so you have to practice this a little bit, but, um, but these would go from four and suck back to the origin to zero, because we're making this turn here from zero to pi over two, and you're going with an R value of four, then three, then two, then one, then zero. It's going from four to zero as we make the turn. Okay, so I hope that was clear for you. All right, uh, let's see, next up, we'll go from pi over two to pi. So next we'll be in this little window right here from pi over two to pi. And let's look at the R values. The R values go from a reach of zero out to a reach of four, but that four again is in the direction that we're facing towards pi. So our bodies are aimed this way. So we'll go out one, two, three, four units in that direction. And so now we'll, we'll increase our radius from zero out to four as we make this turn. Okay, so that makes sense. Let's get rid of that. Okay, uh, in the next little window, we're going from pi to three pi over two, so from, from here to here. And this time we're going from a reach of four units to a reach of eight units, which is pretty far out here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, uh, seven, uh, eight. It's kind of going off my screen here. It should probably actually be lower. I'm just kind of running out of space here. So we'll go from four units out to eight units, which is even farther away. Then as we go from three pi over two to two pi, we go from eight units out to a total of four units out. And so we get a, a shape like this. Um, this guy has a name, this is called a cardioid. For obvious reasons, it looks like a heart-shaped graph. And this is a very popular polar graph. Uh, here I even did one earlier on the calculator. This was a different cardioid graph, but it was uh, something similar to ours. So again, you pick some thetas, you find the R values that go with them, you plot these points and then you sketch out the curve as you fan around from zero to two pi. All right, now before I let you go, I wanna mention one last thing. And it's got something to do with these major values I spoke about. See, the tendency once you do an example or two is you think that you always pick zero pi over two, pi, three pi over two, and two pi. But, but here's something you have to consider. The only reasons we pick these as our thetas was because we had sine of just a theta. So that if we had a theta, then when you plug in zero, pi over two, pi, et cetera, you would be taking sine of the major angles. But let's consider now when you have sine or cosine of something else. Uh, for example, and I'll just make an example up here. Let's say we had three theta instead of just a theta. Well, then you have to be careful. The thetas you would choose for your table would not be zero pi over two pi etc cetera, etc cetera. see here's what you have to do you have to consider three theta to be as a packet those major angles of zero pi over two pi three pi over two two pi uh, etc right three theta as a packet has to equal those major angles which means that the theta should actually be what? How would you solve for theta here? 
Well, hopefully you would say you would divide both sides by three. And that's exactly what we'll do. We'll divide all these guys by three. And we would get what as a result? We would get uh, zero. Um, this would be pi over six, comma, pi over three, um, pi over two, two pi over three, etc. So it looks like we're choosing weird thetas, but don't forget, we're having to triple those angles before we take sine and cosine of it. And so what, watch this. As you triple these angles, what's 3 times 0? Well, it's 0. What's 3 times pi over 6? Well, it's pi over 2. That's a major angle. What's 3 times pi over 3? Well, that's pi. That's a major angle. So in fact, we are taking sine and cosine of our major angles, but um, when your theta is multiplied by a constant, you have to adjust your theta accordingly. So anyway, so hopefully that helps you understand graphing uh, polar equations a little bit better. We'll do some more examples in an upcoming video.